On March the 11th, 2011, Japan was hit by one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. It triggered huge tsunami waves and caused meltdowns at three reactors in the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Hundreds of thousands of people had to be evacuated from the area, which was completely irradiated. Switzerland's heavy reliance on nuclear energy came under intense pressure in the wake of the disaster, and the Swiss government pledged to abandon nuclear power by 2034. The Federal Energy Office says the true price of nuclear power, with the risks it carries, has not been reflected in electricity prices. Uh, nuclear has some risks, and if you introduce the cost of this risk in the electricity price, it's clear, then nuclear is no more cheap. It's very expensive, and for that we have to look that we find a way that electricity prices give, give also a signal to reduce energy consumption. So people will have to pay more for the electricity they use. It follows that they'll look for energy efficient equipment that consumes less power. Many of these tools are already available and were on display at the Cleantech exhibition in Bern. It shows which, which solutions today are already out there in the market, ready for, for communities, for counties, for cities to buy. And in fact, Swiss Cleantech has, a, has, together with the Canton of Bern, launched a program called the Cleantech Compass that is actually a way to specifically match the needs that the counties and the cities have in certain areas, mobility or, or waste disposal or all these things, and match them with the right companies that have solutions ready today. The city of Bern is well on the way to supplying its inhabitants with clean, non-nuclear energy. EWB, or Energy Water Bern, a major electricity supplier for the city of Bern, has built a new energy centre using household waste, wood and gas in combination to produce electricity, steam and warm air for heating. Mit der Verbrennung erzeugen wir Dampf und Fernwärme. Natural gas is used to generate electricity directly, but also to drive turbines that convert steam from burning wood and rubbish into electricity. Steam and heat from the burning process are also sent directly to our customers. For instance, the steam is used by a nearby laundry and by the water purification plant to dry sewage sludge. Two exhibits show how nitrates used for fertilizing crops can be harvested from both human urine and fish feces. This special toilet system produced by Ehrwag in Dubendorf separates feces and urine. The urine is then siphoned off to a storage tank which feeds into a reactor. And you see those small particles here. Those are plastic carriers, biofilm carriers. And the purpose of those biofilm carriers is that bacteria are growing on them and what the bacteria are doing, they're stabilizing the urine. We all know that urine degrades. After some time it smells really bad, actually. It smells of ammonia. And ammonia NH3, that's the main nitrogen compound that we actually want to capture because it's also used as a fertilizer. But when we lose it to the air, it's gone. So what those bacteria do, they actually degrade ammonia to nitrate. The water is then evaporated, producing a fertilizer which contains all the nutrients from urine. And this is the urban farm, a new solution for farming in the city. So here we have a, a fish tank. There's two cubic meters of water. Now those fish, through oxygenation in their gills and in their feces, create ammonia in the water, which is sucked down by a pipe in the middle of the tank into this biofilter. And inside the biofilter we have bacteria. The bacteria create a nitrification process and that nitrate efficient water is then pumped upstairs to our plants. The plants take up the nitrates from the water essentially acting like a filter for the fish. And that, that cleaned water is then returned down to the fish tank. We save between 60 and 80 percent of the water that conventional agriculture uses and we think it's a good, uh, a good solution for farming in the city where we've got very restricted space. These are just a few of the many brilliant ecologically sustainable systems on the market at the moment. These products are expensive because they're prototypes, but the prices are expected to fall through mass production.